It's 16 years since the 2002 World Cup in South Korea and Japan. The tournament holds a special place in my heart, being the first one I remember as a kid, and it was won by Brazil, beating Germany 2-0 in the final, courtesy of a Ronaldo brace, scoring in the final despite its horrific haircut. After the tournament, a 16-man all-star team was announced, so let's look at who was included and what happened next. The first goalkeeper was Oliver Kahn. While the German stopper didn't get his hands on the World Cup, Kahn did win two individual honours to go alongside his place in the All-Star squad, winning the tournament's Golden Ball and Golden Glove award. The keeper would play on for another four years for his country, but again fail to win the World Cup with Germany, losing on home turf in 2006. His playing career came to an end in 2008 with Bayern Munich, and Kahn has since moved into punditry. The second goalkeeper was Rusty Rekbar. Don't know why the World Cup All-Star team wasn't just a starting eleven, but whatever, we've got another goalkeeper in the shape of Turkey's Rustu Rekbar, who came third at the tournament. The following year, Rekbar would sign for Barcelona, but only made four La Liga appearances, returning to Turkey on loan after a year, and re-signing with Fenerbahce permanently in 2006. His career came to an end in 2012 with Besiktas, and Rekbar is now a sports executive. Whatever that means. In defence, Sol Campbell. Englishmen and World Cup All-Star teams have been hard to come by, and in fact only once has there been more than one, and of course that was in 1966 when Bobby Moore and all the boys went the whole damn way. In 2002, Saul Campbell was the only three line to make the All-Star team, and following the World Cup, Big Saul would become invincible with Arsenal, Sue Portsmouth during their financial peril, join and leave Notts County in the space of about five minutes, return to Arsenal, then end his playing career at Newcastle. Campbell is now looking to get into management and describing himself as one of the finest minds in football. Ever the modest man. Next up it's Fernando Hierro. Spain's World Cup starter was nowhere to be seen in 2002, but that didn't stop legendary defender Fernando Hierro making it into the team of the tournament. The following year he would leave Real Madrid, pretty much signalling the end of his glory days, joining Al Rayyan in Qatar for a season before weirdly rowing up at Bolton Wanderers. While his country have started to perform on the international stage, Hierro has moved into coaching, first working under Carlo Ancelotti at Real Madrid and then as the main man at Oviedo, but he has since left via mutual consent, departing in June 2017. Next up it's Hong Young Bo. A defender for South Korea, it was a fantastic tournament for the co-hosts, who made it all the way to the semi-finals, only to lose 1-0 to Germany in the final four. Myungbo has the honour of being the first Asian to appear in four consecutive World Cup tournaments and his playing career came to an end in 2004, with his last club being LA Galaxy, where I'm sure he's considered a star just like David Beckham was and Zlatan Ibrahimovic will be. Myungbo has since moved into management, taking charge of South Korea at senior, under 23 and under 20 level, and his only team at club level has been Gangju Greentown in China, who left in 2017 and have since changed names. That's the club, not the ex-defender. Our fourth defender is Alpay Ozlan. The Turk was at Aston Villa at the time of the 2002 World Cup, having arrived two years earlier after impressing at Euro 2000, and Alpay followed that up with another great showing on the grandest stage. The defender's career would come to an end in 2008 at German side Cologne, Arsenal fans know all about them after they apparently terrorised the streets of North London in the Europa League group stage, and Alpay is now in management, but is currently without a club, leaving Turkish side Samson Spor last year. Our final defender is Roberto Carlos. Finally, we have an actual winner in the All-Star team, with Roberto Carlos our first Brazilian representative. During this period of time, Brazil were pretty blessed at fullback, with Carlos on one side and the legendary Cafu on the other, but it was the man with the rocket free kick who got in the team of the tournament. Carlos's best days were spent at Madrid, and he would go on to play for Fenerbahce, Corinthians, and Anzi Makachkala before coming out of retirement to play and manage Delhi Dynamos, who were his last club in 2015. In 2016, Carlos helped launch a piece of football software called Ginger Scout, which apparently doesn't tell you about all the ginger footballers, much to the disappointment of Paul Scholes and Dave Kitson. On the midfield now with Michael Balak. If you do a quick Twitter search of Michael Ballack's name, you'll find loads of people telling you the German was underrated. No, he was just f***ing class, okay? The goal-scoring midfielder found the net three times at the World Cup and were joined Bayern Munich after the tournament, where he won three Bundesliga titles before moving to Chelsea where he added a Premier League crown to his list of honours, as well as various other trophies. He retired in 2012 after returning to Bayer Leverkusen and now does work in the media. Next up is Claudio Reyna. There has only ever been one American in the World Cup All-Star team, and that man is Claudio Reyna, which is surprising, not because the Americans are so good at the game they call soccer, 
but because the term all-star sounds very, very American. But anyway, Claudio Reyna was actually a Sunderland player at the time and in 2003 would join Manchester City. His final club would be back in the USA with New York Red Bulls, but he now works for the enemy that didn't exist until like 2013, New York City FC, where Reyna is the director of football. Up next it's Rivaldo. OK, Rivaldo was one of the best players in the world in 2002 and scored 5 goals at the tournament, but was involved in a massive moment of shithousery, getting the ball kicked at his leg before clutching his face as if Anthony Joshua had landed a huge punch on him. Which would be weird since AJ was only about 12 at the time. This was Rivaldo at the peak of his powers, but those powers would soon wear off, with the forward seemingly trying to play for anyone and everyone after leaving Barcelona for AC Milan, writing up a further 8 clubs. He retired in 2015 at Mogi Miram, who were one of his first ever clubs. Also, Rivaldo apparently appeared in an Iranian film in 2015, titled I Am Not Salvador, which I imagine wasn't a comedy. Next we've got Ronaldinho. The second part of the three hours, Ronaldinho killed England's World Cup dreams that year, lobbing a ponytailed David Seaman with a free kick from out wide that broke every heart in the nation. Ronaldinho's career would go from strength to strength following the World Cup triumph, switching PSG for Barcelona in 2003 and going on to win the Ballon d'Or two years later, during a time when he was one of the most enjoyable players to watch in the history of the game. Following a spell with AC Milan, Ronaldinho returned to his homeland, playing in Brazil for the likes of Flamengo, Atletico Mineiro and Fluminense, as well as a brief spell in Mexico. The Brazilian officially retired at the start of 2018, much to the disappointment of footy manager players who love to sign the silky veteran. Our final midfielder is Yu Sang Cho. The South Korean is unique in this all-star team in the sense that his career never left Asia, spending his club career in Japan and his native South Korea. Sang Chal would hang up his boots in 2006 at Ulsan Hyundai and move straight into management, again not leaving Asia. His last job began in 2014 as manager of the Ulsan University team, and I can't imagine too many of you included that uni on your UCAS form. On to the forwards now with Ronaldo. He would score both goals in the final against Germany, ending the tournament with a golden boot winning tally of 8. What would happen next for Ronaldo? Well, for starters, he shaved that stupid bit of hair off his forehead, and then he got really fat. Oh, and in between that, he would play for Real Madrid, AC Milan, and Corinthians, but mainly he got quite fat, and thus brought to life the enigma known as Fat Ronaldo. I wonder what we'll call him when Cristiano retires and puts on a few pounds. Next up, it's Hassan Sass. A third Turkish player in the All-Star team, this was Turkey's best ever performance at a World Cup, and actually only their second appearance at the competition. At the time, Sass was a Galatasaray player, and he'd remained that until 2009, when he eventually hung up his boots. The winger has remained associated with the club in some capacity, working as co-assistant manager between 2011 and 2013, and again in the present day, working under Faith Terim on both occasions. Next, we've got Miroslav Klose. The German striker is the king of scoring at World Cups, finding the net four times in 2002, before buying in another 12 World Cup goals at the following three tournaments to take his tally to 16, making him the top scorer in World Cup history. Sadly, Klose won't be scoring any more World Cup goals, retiring from international duty in 2014, and then hanging up his club boots in 2016, with Lazio being his final club. However, we should still see the ex striker at the World Cup as part of Joachim Lowe's coaching staff, as Germany go in search of defending their crown. And finally, El Hadj Juf. Before the tournament, Juf had joined Liverpool for 10 million quid, and Red fans must have been licking their lips after seeing the Senegal man light up the tournament, reaching the quarterfinals. Sadly, Juf was not that big a hit at Anfield, and his career would just be littered with controversy throughout. From spitting to nightclub brawls, from even more spinning new arguments with Scott Brown. Duke's final club would be Sabah FA in Malaysia and he retired last year, now working back in Senegal as a goodwill ambassador whilst running his own sports newspaper and gym, hopefully keeping all of his phlegm inside his mouth. So that's the all-star team from the 2002 World Cup, let us know what you think in the comments below, thanks for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.